Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com and celebrity spokesmodel for the ClassicsToday.com merchandise shop, which is open for business. And that's all I'm going to say about it. There's a link at the, in the description of this video if you want to go have a look at all the cool stuff. Today, we're going to present another of the world's most beautiful melodies. And this is one that you suggested and it was such a great suggestion. I went like, ah, of course, I should have done it ages ago. It's the finale of the Franck Violin Sonata, possibly one of the most fabulous melodies ever written by anybody. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's haunting. Once you hear it, you can't get it out of your head. It's, it's, just, it's just magnificent. Let's listen to it. Let's just listen to it right now. This is on Naxos. Takako Nishizaki, violin, and Ieno Yando, piano. Take it away, folks. to die for. My God, it's so beautiful. Now, what are the things that make this melody so special? Well, first of all, there's the fact that it's, it's a strict canon. That is, the instruments follow each other. Well, sometimes the violin leads, sometimes the piano leads, but they play the same melody a fixed distance apart, just like row your boat, just like in a round. That gives the melody a, a, an incredible simplicity and elegance and, and a sense of innocence, of incorruptible sweetness that's never, never cloying and never excessively sentimental. It's just pure, absolutely pure melody. And the two seem so happy to be playing this simple game of one following the other. But there's another aspect of the melody that gives it an extra measure of depth. And that is a habit that Franck had, a distinctive, a distinctive aspect of his melodic vocabulary. And that, that aspect is to take a tiny phrase and repeat it with different harmonization almost exactly the same. Sometimes they'll change a note in it, but essentially it's the same thing, but harmonized differently. And in this case, it's that latter phrase. That. I mean, it sounds so sort of almost uninteresting when I sing it, of course, but the fact that it's being done in canon is what makes it so special. But it's the harmony, the underlying harmony that changes on the repetition. And it gives that melody this, I don't know, the, the bit that you can't really get out of your head. It's amazing. And it is an absolute, absolute characteristic of Franck's music. And I want to play you a couple other examples of it. So you know, I mean, that's how we recognize it's Franck. You listen to any tune by Franck, and it's going to do that at some point, just about. I mean, not always, but you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like for example, the big tune in Le Chasseur Maudit, right? Here it is, the big tune. Yeah, da, 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 da. You know, sometimes it's major and then it's a switch to minor, but the point is that the harmony shifts under the same basic melody. So here's another moment like that, but it sounds totally different, it's in a different context.
right? I mean, did you hear the, the similarity of concept? Obviously, the tune's different. And, of course, the piece that has more of this type of tune than just about anything else is the, the Franck Symphony in D minor. It really is an exercise in that type of melody, particularly the finale, which is constructed out of phrases, all of which do that. There's ya da 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 and that, that gets repeated that way. Da 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 the second time around. And then it goes ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da da it's it's all the same concept, although the tunes are different. Here, let me play you the opening of the finale and stop singing these things with my horrible, wretched voice, and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Here's the finale of the symphony in D minor. So there you go. I mean, that's, that's a critical aspect of what we know as the language of César Franck. And it's one of the things that makes this melody and the finale of the violin sonata so special. So with those different things in mind, I want to play you once again, once again, the uh, finale of the violin sonata, just the melody, just that part, and listen to it with fresh ears. And, and I'll see if, see if it makes a difference to you. Again, it's Takako Nishizaki and Yeno Yando. Here you go. very essence of limpid, pure, flowing melody. Absolutely fabulous. And I just want to point out that those other two examples were also on Naxos. The symphony is with Gunter Neuhold and the Royal Flanders Philharmonic. And the Chasseur Maudit, the tone poem, was the Royal Scottish National Orchestra under Jean-Luc Tango. They're wonderful performances, by the way. So that's it. One of the world's most beautiful melodies explained, at least to a degree. You never really can explain a melody, can we? We can only describe it and say, oh, well, that's what does it. And that's what does it. Absolutely. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>